Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in the Siemens Tier Portal version 18 playlist. Um, in this video we're going to have a look at the options available to us for our PLC. So down here if you right click on PLC and choose properties we get a window here that gives us very very many different options around our PLC. So some of them will open on different um, different windows depending on what you visited last or what you did last. Um, I think if you've added a PLC and then visited this for the first time, it will actually open on the protection and security, which is the wizard that we ran when we first added the device. So here you can run the wizard again, or you can change your um, access levels and set up your protection of uh, PLC configuration data and all that sort of stuff that we went through in the first video. But really, I wanted to show you this because there are places that you should come into uh, in, in this uh, dialog box here and uh, set up some particular things for your CPU. So basically, in the general tab, we have project information, identification and maintenance. There's nothing really that you need to set up in here. But in the Profinet interface here, this is where we would be setting up our IP address. And obviously, you would want to come in and set up your IP address. If you have um, other devices that are going to hang off your CPU, such as VSDs or um, couplers to other systems, then you would need a subnet. And all you need to do is click add new subnet and it that is taken care of by Tier Portal for you. And we'll come on to how you connect stuff to that subnet in later videos. But um, yeah, that's basically all you need to do to set up your IP address. Uh, Startup, you shouldn't really need to touch, but there are options to say what you want to do after the start, after the power comes back on for your uh, CPU. So you can say, be in the same operating mode as before power off, run or warm restart and run, um, or say no restart, remain in stop mode. You know, if the power goes off, we need our application to be checked if the power went off before the CPU is started. And then we referred to um, this particular option here about comparison preset to actual configuration when we were setting up output uh, modules for our IO. This is what it refers to here. So start up the CPU even if there's a mismatch or start up the CPU only if the output uh, cards or the IO cards are compatible with what the project said they were going to be. So I think um, particular firmwares and stuff um, of the IO modules wouldn't trigger it saying it was incompatible unless there was a major difference in in how it operated but uh, if you have startup only if compatible selected and someone puts a different type of 16-way input card in or uh, eight-way output card or or whatever they've changed and it's not compatible by Siemens standards uh, you won't be able to start your CPU even if you would be able to logically operate stuff the same way so just be careful with this one if uh if you don't really know what you're doing, it's best to just leave it as startup CPU, even if there's a mismatch. You'll get a warning on your compiler that um, the output cards aren't the same or, or it's running in a mismatch state. And I think you get the maintenance light on as well. So cycle here, this is your maximum and minimum cycle time. Personally, I never leave this as one millisecond. I will always set this as something like 75 or a big enough value to give me a small buffer of space at the end of my cycle um, in which the CPU is not loaded to do anything because I find that uh, the communication management runs so much better when there's space at the end of your cycle time. Um, Siemens does like a decimated uh, communication uh, sort of uh, approach where it will interrupt the scan to make sure that communication elements are serviced properly. But uh, if you have your minimum cycle time too short, you end up with jitter basically on your program. Or so That's certainly what I've experienced in the past. Um, it's become habit now, so potentially Siemens have fixed that. I don't know. But uh, I don't particularly think it's a good idea to say run in as fast as you can. Um, you should try and give your, uh, your CPU a minimum time that is longer than your program actually takes to execute, uh, if that makes sense. So then you have communication load, which is relative to what I've just been talking about. 
how much of your CPU, uh, of your cycle, sorry, on your CPU is dedicated to communication. Um, system clock and memory. These here are M registers or um, M addresses, very similar to the I and Q that we did for inputs and outputs. These are internal M flags. And if you turn these on, you can then make use of these uh, inside your project uh, to pick up things like first cycle, the very first cycle that the PLC uses uh, when it turns on. That means that M1.0 would be active for one scan, the first scan. And then you have always high, always true, and always low, always false. Um, and down here you have clock bits. So these are uh, bits that pulse or are high for half of the cycle and low for half of the cycle. So 10 hertz, 5 hertz, all the way down to 0.5 hertz. And you can use them for various different things. So I use them for pulses or, or timed pulses that get counted um, for situations where I might want to count a month. Um, but I can't do that with a typical IEC timer. Or if it gets interrupted uh, or the PLC restarts, I don't want to be retaining that with a retain timer and all that sort of stuff. Like A, tip, a, a straightforward counter is more practical in, uh, in that terms. And these pulses are great for picking that stuff up. Plus, unlike an IEC timer, these are sort of they they come on exactly when they're supposed to come on uh not relative to scan um you could still miss them on your scan depending on what your project's doing uh like you run a different interrupt or something like that but uh they will always occur at the right time a somatic memory card just options around aging of the the card system diagnostics there's nothing really in here plc alarms again Unless you're doing specific things, you don't need to touch this stuff. We don't need to turn on the web server unless you need it. Um, display, this is relative to the hardware display, the actual physical display on the front of the CPU. Um, again, not really relative unless you definitely need to come in here and change something. Um, multilingual support, again, unless we need it, so you don't need to come in here. Time of day is a... Interesting one, because if you're using an NTP server, that's where you'd set this up. Um, but also quite common, um, this sort of setup for daylight saving, uh, it is correct for UK time. A lot of people don't actually want it turned on, um, especially if you're using uh, something else to manage your time, such as like an NTP server, which will actually update the time for you. Um, if you're having problems with daylight saving time, this is where you come in and turn it off, basically. Protection and security is the tab we spoke about um, earlier when you first open this. And OPC UA, this is where you turn on your OPC UA server and configure access, like guest access and uh, what the server address is and things like that. So the system power supply gives you information on your power segments for each slot in your system. Advanced configuration, very unlikely you will ever need to change anything in here. The only time you'd need to change something in here is if you're doing port forwarding or advanced DNS configurations or pointing information from this to uh, a different host and website and things like that. So um, connection resources tell you how many PG connections you've had, HMI communication connections you've used. So we can see here that this PLC is capable of using up to four HMI communications. Um, it can use two web communications um, and overall it has 10 um, station resources. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they get to these numbers because looking at this, you, you can't configure these anyway. Um, so PG com uh, communications and stuff, you can't configure them. They're used when something is connected, but you'll find that if too many people or too many connections are being made and you run out of resources basically and this is just where you can come in and have a look at, at what what you've got available to you that you can't actually change anything in here and then you have an overview of addresses which is a very interesting uh, place to come and have a look when you've finished setting up your hardware layer because this tells you whether you've got any gaps in your addressing and uh, so you can click here and go to address gaps 
and we can see that between our outputs 1 to 32,767, that's a gap. And the same on our inputs, but from 34 to 32,767, that's a gap. So it's useful to find out where you have spares if you're going to add new modules and things like that, rather than tier portal keep coming up saying that's wrong, something else is already on this. And then finally, we have runtime licenses. And this uh, is only really relative if you're using OPC, ProDiag, or the Energy Suite. I think that's the only ones that are actually available on here. Oh, and uh, your Mac runtime license. So basically, if you're using something like OPC, for example, Tier Portal will tell you here, type of required license. And in there, it may say something like, the medium license is required. And you need to tell Tier Portal that you will have a medium license um, if you were ever asked to produce it, basically. So that's everything um, in this configuration. Um, it's somewhere you will have to visit when you're setting your PRC up to do your Profinet interface, but it's worth knowing where some of this other stuff is as well, because if you've picked up a project, for example, where somebody's using the always true bit, unless you come and turn it on, it's not available in your PLC. So you'll find all that sort of stuff here.